Denmark, 1579. Astronomer Tycho Brahe is hard at work, analysing the vast astronomical data he's collected over the past few years. After crunching the numbers, the results confirm his suspicions. The Earth does not appear to move around the Sun. This contradicts Copernicus' heliocentric model and supports Brahe's own unique beliefs. How did he reach this conclusion, and why is it significant? Let's find out. Hello and welcome. We're thrilled to have you join us as we explore fascinating and lesser-known stories from the history of science. The best part? You don't need any technical background, just an open mind and eager curiosity. Let's begin. In the 16th century, Nicolaus Copernicus proposed the heliocentric model, which placed the Sun at the centre of the universe, with the Earth and other planets orbiting around it. His ideas were published in his 1543 work on the revolutions of the celestial spheres, which presented a mathematical model for heliocentric astronomy. This concept provoked significant controversy, challenging both religious interpretations of scripture and the ancient Greek view of the cosmos, which placed the Earth at the unmoving center. While the geocentric model had theological backing, the Ptolemaic system had multiple issues with accuracy and had to account for the apparent backwards or retrograde motion that planets sometimes exhibited. It required a complex system of epicycles to account for this apparent retrograde behavior and had numerous accuracy issues. Moreover, the notion that the Earth could be moving at such high speed seemed absurd to many, including the educated. Still, the simplicity of the heliocentric model was compelling, even though it was difficult for many astronomers to accept. Could a compromise be found that maintained the improved accuracy of Copernicus' model while preserving the belief in a stationary Earth? Enter Tycho Brahe, a Danish astronomer who made major contributions to our understanding of the heavens. He studied the ideas of Copernicus and found them lacking in accuracy. What's more, he could not bring himself to believe that the Earth was traveling through the vastness of space at incredible speed. However, he did appreciate how heliocentrism did away with the issues of epicycles. Tycho proposed a compromise. He said that the solar system could be modeled by assuming all the other planets known at the time revolved around the Sun, but then said the Sun revolved around the Earth. Mathematically, this is known as a coordinate transform, and it resulted in the same conclusions as the Copernican models. There was only one problem. It completely ignored physics. Though it may be hard to believe, scholars at the time did not know that the heavens operate according to the same laws that are present on Earth. Gravity was assumed to be something found solely on our planet. It wouldn't be until Kepler and Newton that the rules by which the planet's orbit was understood in mathematical terms. Since the physics of the heavens weren't known, Tyquism provided predictions that were equivalent to those who followed Copernicus, though the average person found it easier to accept. Without an understanding of gravity, there was but one test that could have been performed to determine whether the Sun moved around the Earth, or the Earth moved around the Sun. The main prediction difference between Tyquism and heliocentrism was in star parallax. Parallax is the apparent shift in the position of an object when viewed from two different perspectives. This phenomenon is widely used in astronomy, photography and everyday life to determine distances. Tycho was quite skilled at measuring parallax for nearby celestial bodies, such as the Moon and planets, which showed observable shifts. Tycho argued that if Earth were in motion around the Sun, as Copernicus proposed, the positions of nearby stars should shift against the background of distant stars over the course of a year. This phenomenon is known as stellar parallax. Despite his improvements to observational tools, Tycho was unable to detect any measurable parallax for stars, leading him to conclude one of two things. Either the Earth didn't move, or the stars were unimaginably distant and incredibly large. At the time, the concept that nighttime stars were gigantic was near nonsensical, even bogus. It wouldn't be until the 1800s when the first parallax was detected, so Tycho's skepticism wasn't uncalled for. Although Tycoism would eventually give way to full heliocentrism by the late 17th century, it played a crucial role in the progression of astronomical science. By proposing a compromise that bridged the gap between traditional geocentrism and the revolutionary heliocentric model, Tycho Brahe facilitated further inquiry into the mechanics of the cosmos. His observations laid the groundwork for future breakthroughs by astronomers like Johannes Kepler and Isaac Newton. Tycho's contributions remind us that even when a scientific theory is eventually superseded, it can still serve as a vital stepping stone toward greater understanding. In science, a detour may be just another path toward the truth. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. 
It's really appreciated.